Welcome back to coverage of Pro Tour March of the Machine. We are off to a blazing fast start here so far. David Olsen taking down Javier Dominguez. And we are going to get settled in for the next few rounds, my friends. So, Corey Baumeister alongside Ely Loney. That's me. I'm ready. Are you ready, friends? I'm ready. I'm ready excited. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. So let's take a look at the next matchup here with our players. The top eight bracket, like I mentioned, we just saw David Olsen clinch in a clean 3-0. Up next, we've got Nathan Stoyer. 3 nice 3 me. 1. Yeah, yeah got a game out of it. Yeah. Did indeed. <laughs> up next, we got Nathan Stoyer up against Yi Wen Chen. And it's going to be Rakdos Midrange versus Azorius Soldiers. I right. love the Soldiers deck, Corey. It's yeah. so sweet. It was looking really good when we were watching it yesterday. We'll see how it lines up against the Rakdos decks. Um, yeah, it should be a really interesting one to see who goes on to play David. I bet David is feeling quite uh, quite pleased that there's so much Rakdos in this top eight. Yes. But let's go on in and have a look at what happens here between Yuan Chen and Nathan Stoyer. Nathan Stoyer playing Rakdos midrange at the bottom of your screen, and Yuan Chen up at the top. So good luck. Have fun from both players. All right. Looks like Nathan did mulligan to six here. Yi Win keeping the seven. And following it, or starting it off with the 2 1, very powerful card. Recruitment Officer. Yeah, Recruitment Officer, awesome addition to the strategy. And uh, the Knights, oh, excuse me, the Soldier's deck kind of came together nicely the last few sets. Yeah. You know, some very powerful cards that you're going to see. Sky Strike Officer in particular, as also the Zephyr Sentinel that's just been able to protect and, you know, prevent yeah. any of the creatures dying. So you can almost play this deck like a flash deck, so it's kind of neat. Yep, absolutely. And Azorius Soldiers ended up having one of the higher win rates here, yeah. not just from Yi Win, but a lot of players that played this deck ended up having a lot of success with it. So one of the more breakout decks, it's hard to, you know, put this Rakdos midrange deck as not as not the breakout deck <laughs> uh, because it just had such dominance from this team handshake. Yeah, team handshake. I think uh, if all goes well for them, this will be known as uh, Pro Tour team handshake. Yeah, no kidding, no kidding. I already lost one teammate, but if yeah. the other three could get through, it would yeah. still be the most historic, uh, <laughs> historic top eight. So go for the throat, taking care of that recruitment officer, respecting the little one drop as it can uh, refill the hand for Yuan Chen. Yep, and probably going to see um, flashed in a couple of soldiers here at end step with resolute reinforcements. The really popular two drop, and then when you go straight into Sky Strike Officer, that yeah. kind of combination of not really having to attack and just being able to draw cards to really just go for the long game against these Rakdos decks mm. and uh, just you know, bleed out every bit of removal that they have. And then eventually you have this overwhelming battlefield oh, that'll yeah. take them down. Oh, yeah. And if you're able to get Harbin down following that up or even Invasion of Gobekan, I mean, that's just a three defense battle. Yeah. So, you know, you have a board, you play that, you're just able to flip it straight away. And yeah. then if the game does go long, every time you're attacking, you're getting counters on your creatures. So, you know, historically when aggro decks would get into the longer game, mm -hmm. they would start falling behind. But there's some great catch-up mechanics in this list, and I absolutely love it. Yep, absolutely. And for sweepers, there is a couple of sweepers in the board um, for Nathan, but Glistening Deluge is probably going to be one of the bigger cards that yeah. we're going to see. Oh, Doesn't sure. really get negated by the flip side of that invasion. But it definitely still stops you know, all the spot removal mm -hmm. of Braids, Blittering Bolts, uh, Barrages, etc. Danic Pius Apprentice taking care of there, courtesy of an abrade from Nathan Stoyer. Follows up with a Blood Tithe Harvester. And no land drop for Nathan, wow. though. That is really bad news there for the reigning world champion. All right, so has to make sure to hit a land drop soon. Otherwise, he's going to fall a little far behind. But, you know, that was a Malta 6, if I uh, remember correctly. Yep, yep. So keeping a hand with interaction removal spells and a Blood Tithe Harvester that can discard and draw you another card, that's not the the worst key. Yeah, I would definitely keep that as well. Yeah. Just a little unlucky to not hit a land drop there. But with the blood here, you know, you, you do have ways to manipulate your draw step a little bit to find something. But find ooh, something ooh, ooh. is what Nathan is going to have to do really quickly here because oh, yeah. the pressure is on. We just got a lord on the battlefield. Valiant veteran buffing up the soldiers now. So it is going to be a face race. These soldiers want to get Nathan Stoyer dead as quick as possible here. Do we find a land for Nathan Stoyer? 
So the Harvester is kind of face up here as able to kill the veteran, mm -hmm. but there is two mana, and you were saying the Zephyr Spirit, um, or Zephyr Sentinel, yeah. excuse me, a really nice card here. So we'll see if you win has that. That would just be set up nicely to be able to return it, get that extra counter, but instead just falls. Fortunately, no flashy protection this time around. Yeah, I believe I saw a Lan and a Harbrin, uh, the Vanguard Aviator, in hand for sure for you in, as well as one other card. All right, big draw step here for Nathan, discarding and invoke to spare up the blood and no land, Oh, Ailey. man, this is a terrible start here for Nathan Stoyer and Team Handshake. Yeah. And they need their luck to no turn around kidding. right now, so... Corey, just remind everybody how this top eight is playing out. You'll see there's three dots beneath each player or above each player here. Yep, absolutely. So a little bit different than normal traditional top eight mm -hmm. or just traditional matches. They're going to be playing best out of five games here where the first two games will not be sideboarded at all. So yeah. even next game, they're just going to present. And then after that, it'll be post-board sideboarded games for okay. games three, four, and five if necessary. See if we get the full five out of these players. Here comes Harbin, the Vanguard Aviator. Would love to have five soldiers attacking to buff them all up and give them flying. But he'll just have to settle for the two at the moment. Yep, absolutely. And it looks like Ewin is kind of flooding out a little bit. You know, you, there's this always this tension mm. point with mana flood versus mana screw. And if you can draw out of it, the deck that has been missing land drops usually can pull ahead. Yeah. But you have to, of course, draw out of it at some point. The one thing that helps for you win, though, is that Mirex. You know, mm -hmm. the Mirex being able to give you longevity, even yeah. if you miss land drops, a really nice innovation, uh, not only in this deck, but we've, I mean, we've we seen see it. In a couple, yeah. yeah, we've seen it in Reanimator decks, <laughs> we've seen it in Aggro decks. That card is just incredible. A bunch of lands here now being tapped. Oh, right. the make disappear, protecting against the go for the throat. Another yep. big swing, Nathan Stoyer down to seven, finally finds land number three. Okay. And Denik is gonna get uh, munched from the graveyard. No, no, Pious Apparition is back, and the yep. the Valiant Veteran is eaten by the Graveyard Trespasser. So gains a life and has mm -hmm. a little bit of blocking power here, but there is still six power in the air. Seven power total here, so if there's any Lord from Yi Win, the game is just over mm -hmm. on the spot. Yeah, just turn things sideways. <laughs> That's the way to do it. There we go. Seven oh boy. damage. All right, so just reset back everything, give it a shuffle, and into game two we go. No sideboarding for this one. Yep. Nathan Story will be on the play. Let's see what the mulligan situation was. All right, keeping a hand of seven. Let's right. go. Probably have a more smooth draw here. Duress, decent in this matchup. There is Make Disappear. There mm -hmm. is, per, um, you know, a couple other counter spells as well as that Invasion, um, but not not a perfect card. You know, you, yeah. you probably are going to be siding that out in this matchup for just much more removals. I yeah, think Nathan's yeah. post-board game plan is just going to be kill everything. <laughs> That's a good plan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> kill all the creatures and then just hope to win the game with a Shieldred, probably the most important card yeah. up against this Soldier's deck. But Nathan really wants to even it up at one uh, one game apiece. Yeah, for sure. To have a better chance of the post board games. So Nathan just uh, taking note of what's in hand there. We see a protect the negotiators. Pretty nifty uh, counter spell. Yeah. Able to give you a body on the board if it's kicked, along with countering spells. So. And not only just a body, it is still a soldier as well. Uh -huh. So that card is really perfect for uh -huh. this deck. Oh, it's so cool. And I mean, uh, one of the lands in here too, Fortified Beachhead. It was yeah. the only land of its kind in uh, Brothers War, where you're yeah. able to give your team plus one, plus one, if you got five mana alongside it. So <laughs> it's really, really cool too. Really strong land for sure. Yeah, this deck really had all the tools, but Cut Down being one of the yeah. main cards that kind of has held it back a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but now with the invasion kind of being able to um, Stemmy those draws a little bit, yeah. as well as Fairy Mastermind as the new inclusion to kind of go long. Made this deck look really good, and especially mm. punishing to all the reanimator decks that were being yeah. played this weekend. Atali was probably the best sign for these Azorius Soldiers deck. <laughs> Be like, yes, please cast Seven Drops. Please cast Cruelties. <laughs> I'm in. 
<laughs> yeah, just being able to you know combine reactive permission with aggression, it's so, so fun to play. Agreed. You know, it doesn't always have the best matchup against the rest of the meta, but in the hands of Yuan Shin, it's looking great so far. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think it was around 60, 62% win rate throughout the weekend, which is Just, really impressive. That is. You know, anything over like 55%, yeah. you start going, oh, yeah, that's pretty darn good. So yeah. over 60. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it always feels weird. It's like only 50, 55% winning your matches. That's not that great. But you think about how many people are yeah. playing and, you know, how much variance is in Magic as well. So those numbers end up being really, really strong. Anything in the 60s, 65s is just a dominant performance. For sure. Here we're going to see Fable the Mirror Breaker. After the Blood Tithe Harvester for Nathan Stoyer, will we see... Yep. Any response here from you and Chen? Not for the time being. Yep, able to sneak that in before Protect the Negotiators is able to counter mm -hmm. this. If you're on the play, Protect the Negotiators does get to counter Fable, but yeah. when Nathan's on the play, and if there's not a make disappear, uh, it's going to resolve and it's going to be really, really strong for him. Nice. Here comes a Fairy Mastermind, and if uh, that Fairy looks familiar, well, it's because it's Yuta Takahashi, <laughs> former world champion, just before Nathan Stoyer. Yep, exactly. We'll be seeing a, a card from Nathan Stoyer as well. Nice. Ooh, uh, that should be really sweet to watch. Make. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's one of the coolest things about being world champion. No Ch kidding. Money, title, no. I want to be immortalized on a magic card. Thank you. That will live with you forever. That's for yeah. sure. And we've seen uh, previous world champion Javier Dominguez mm -hmm. with Fervent Champion. You know, he has that framed in his house. Yep. Paolo Vitor has uh, Elite Spellbinder. Yep. All cards that have seen a fair amount of play, so it's great to see Fairy Mastermind in the mix here, too, at the yeah. top eight of Pro Tour Watch the Machine. And it's doing a lot of work in Legacy, all these eternal formats that, you know, really is what Yuta mm -hmm. wanted. You yeah. know, wanted a card that was really good <laughs> in those style of decks, maybe to pair with Bitter Blossom, one of his mm -hmm. favorite cards. Nice. I think everyone was like, oh, yeah, he's making a fairy. Oh, yeah, 100%. for sure. <laughs> All right, so deciding on the discard here from Nathan, Fable 2, or Fable Chapter 2, deciding what to pitch away, if anything, before we get to attacking here. It's a pretty good sign if uh, there's a big think about a discard because you know, your hand must be pretty decent. Then. Yeah, you don't exactly have five lands and it's an easy get rid of yeah. two of them type of situation. Now, you win, we did see earlier, did have Protect the Negotiators uh, as a spell here. So that is going to be counter unless you pay two if it's kicked. So Nathan's trying to play around that in some way. Uh, so not discarding. No discarding. No discard. All right. That's the flex. Mm hmm I don't need more cards. My hand is perfect. So what Nathan is probably trying to set up here is harvest down the one creature and then play a three drop to once again make protect the negotiators really awkward. Mm -hmm. Or, of course, play a four drop after you attack with the shaman. Attack in here with the shaman. Blood Tithe Harvester takes care of the fairy mastermind. All right, if there's a shield red, yes. This has to be the most important card, at least in game one, against you win, because uh -huh. there is one destroy evil, and then there's wandering emperors to deal with it if it gets turned sideways. Outside of that, Ailey, you cannot take it off the battlefield. So if Nathan never attacks, and you mm -hmm. win never finds destroy evil, oh boy. that evil will remain on the battlefield. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> The apocalypse comes for us all. Yes. Yuan Chen has to find a way to deal with Shieldred, or this game is going to be over in short order indeed. Now, post-board, there is three Destroy Evils, which yeah. I'm almost assuredly will be coming in. Oh, yeah. It's just um, got so many it. targets, you know. Oh, we've yeah. been playing Fable the Mirror Breaker. Cool. Destroy Evil. Get yes. out of here. Get it out of there. And then we can <laughs> also deal with Shieldred, you know, one of the toughest cards for this deck. Uh, it's extra bonus. There are also some mm -hmm. Brutal Cathars that Wonderful. might come in as well. Nice. Harbin Vanguard Aviator hits the board alongside his friends. Now, one of the advantages that this soldier's deck does have is flying. So, you know, potentially yep. could be a racing situation if Nathan Stoyer doesn't have removal for the threats. It's so tough to race Shieldred, though, especially yeah. with the blood tokens where you can kind of gain some extra life. Like, the one thing about Yuin's deck is you can go super wide, mm -hmm. and with a couple of lords, the attacks do end up looking very, yeah, very scary. But yeah, it is no easy feat for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, perhaps an invasion of Gobekan can help him keep up here. Yep. You know, attack something in hand and then give the buff to the creatures that attacked. But uh, Reckoner Bankbuster on the board now for Nathan Stoyer alongside the Reflection, Shieldred, and 
The little treasure goblin. Looks like only one card left there for Nathan, though, so relatively out of steam, mm -hmm. unless this bank buster finds some goodies. But every bank uh, that gets busted here, you get to gain two life as well <laughs> with shield, red. Right? True. 22. Just finds the, uh, the potion stored in the vault, right? There you go. Yeah. Another resolute All reinforcements right. flashed in, so we've got five. Oh, we've got five, five creatures. Yeah, yeah. We're, gonna, we're just going to have all of them fly. So if Nathan doesn't have removal for Harbin, this is bad news bears for the world champion. Yep, absolutely. That is a large attack. Able to put four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve damage. Ooh. Owie. But then on the crackback, the crackback you know, hurts. Yeah, the yep, crackback exactly. equals not a good time here for you and Chan. <laughs> Let's just uh, put it that way. All right, combat is declared. So does yeah. it pump others? Uh, all, all of my creature. Include itself? Yes. yes. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yep, just deciding if wow. it is other or not. So I'm at a, a ten. Huge ooh, chunk ooh, of life ooh, there for Nathan. That's how you get things done. Oh, boy. Okay, Recruitment so we, officer as the follow-up. Four mana left open here from UN. And we know that last card is uh, protect the negotiators. Mm -hmm. So there is something to play a little bit of defense. Now, Nathan will be able to draw off Bankbuster, draw off the blood, draw for turn. So go up to relative 16 life. Mm -hmm. And with that Mirax, I believe uh, UN can actually pressure... Lethal next turn? Yeah, pressure lethal. But also has to do some blocking, so this will yeah, be a yeah. huge turn here for Nathan. Yeah, because he has enough up to create another 1-1. One, one. It can't block, so that would be for attack purposes. Like you mentioned, there is the counter spell. I'm not sure if he's got any other cards in hand right now. Yeah, it looks like just one, but not 100% as well. 13. Man. This is a lot closer than I thought it would be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure you win played against a lot of Rakdos oh, mid-range sure. throughout the weekend. Probably not so much Nathan playing against this Azorius Soldier deck as well, uh, since it was a relatively more unknown quantity. Yeah. I mean, I think Cedric asked uh, Javier about the domain controllers. Yeah. You said, I don't no, know. No, I haven't played it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it, in situations like a Pro Tour, it's safe to go for yep. the known quantity, but sometimes so you nice. get paid off for taking the risk. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Or sometimes it, it really makes you fall on your face, but when you yeah. do hit the home run. Oh, yeah, you feel I mean, so good. I mean, and you can get rewarded with, oh. you know, being on the train for a full year, pro uh -huh. tour, or everything. That's just awesome. Okay, so here is Channel Sokens in, and Ooh. here comes. Here comes the team. A big old attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you have protecting hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Says you have protect in hand, so. Seven down to two and my dad is yep, is just saying this is what's going to happen if you block shielded. You're going to take seven, go to two, going to draw a card, and that will be over. Yeah. The one thing that could happen is recruitment officer drawing something. Now, is there something you can draw? <sighs> so actually, there is a way that Nathan is not going to win this game. Yeah. If Yi Win draws the one of um, Wandering Emperor, Wandering Emperor mm. and exiles Shieldred with the trigger on the stack, That's then Yi Win would win. Yeah. But there's only one copy. But Nathan may be overlooking that one outer. Oh, but the uh, recruitment officer is just creature value three or less. Yeah, no, not that, but if Yi Win actually draws it. Right. Because then the trigger will go on the stack. With the trigger on the stack, you can still play it. Okay. Yeah, so recruitment officer can't find anything. But there we go. Magic. If that is on the top, and it is only a one of, then Nathan's foolproof plan, in air quotes, <laughs> uh, is not good enough, and Yi Win will win this game. Okay, well, now the cut down is probably enough anyways, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just making sure. Yeah. Trigger. Well, that's a blue card, so right. not the Wandering Emperor that UN needed. So let's take a look at sideboards uh, between you and me here, Corey. Yeah. You mentioned the Destroy Evils. Those are coming in for sure. There's also Brutal Cathar, Surge of Salvation, another good uh, 
option in this matchup. Yeah, sure. I mean, it says the color's black and red on yeah. there, so that would make a lot of sense to bring that in. Lantern Flare is also an option if you plan to go wide and you want to have another answer for Shieldred. Maybe you bring in that. Probably not. And then we do um, have a Lauren of the third path. Maybe you bring that in. A lot of question marks here from you, Win, because you can kind of go any way. Are you really afraid of Shieldred? Do you want to just have something that's more well-rounded, like Brutal Cat? are to be able to deal with a bunch of creatures. Well, Nathan Stoyer side of things, just a bunch more creature removal. Kill everything, like you said, Corey. Yep, absolutely. And it looks like Nathan decided to take out Chandra. That makes a lot right, of yep. sense. Take out some, uh, some Liliana's, bring in some Duress, and brings in that land. It's always interesting sideboard yeah. decisions when you uh, see lands coming in and going out. <laughs> Kicking things right. off here with a good old Blood Tithe Harvester. No Solid surprises start. there. Yep, Nathan on the mulligan to six there. See what the turn three play is for Yi Wen. First time seeing Sky Strike Officer here. The really powerful payoff from the soldier oh, deck. Oh, yeah. This card is excellent. Another flying body Combat. allows you to draw cards if your creatures aren't doing any blocking or attacking. Yep. <laughs> reckon a reckoner bankbuster follow up here from Nathan Stoyer. Something we're going to see a lot of for the remainder of the standard, I have no doubts. Yep, and Ewen decided to not play the Sky Strike Officer here, looking to hold up some counter magic mm -hmm. or some kind of flash threat. Yeah, and it looks like Ewen did bring in the Brutal Cathars. Brought in a Wandering Emperor, a Denek, and some well. extra counter spells. All right, Bankbuster does get countered there by Negate. No surprise to see a couple extra reactive spells for Yu and Chen. The negate, just the one up in the sideboard. I don't think he's playing any main deck, so. No, just the one sideboard. So great find there to keep the uh, card draw engine at bay. Recruitment officer down on the board now for Yu and Chen. And uh, Nathan Stoyer. It's going to be hoping to find a couple of uh, removal spells if Yuan Chen is able to keep going like this, because we did see the Sky Strike Officer in hand. Just one more soldier needed for him to get his draw engine online, too. Yep, absolutely. Yuan still holding up counter magic here, just valuing if Shieldred gets cast. I got to have a way to deal <laughs> with that. It just took over the game last oh, yeah. game. Shieldred is such bad news. But uh, we do know that post board, a couple extra tools for you and Chen in the form of Destroy Evil. As well as I believe he brought in some Lantern Flares too. Not a card you see very often, but yeah. quite nifty. A really good card at racing. Yeah. And that's really what these Azorius Soldiers decks are all trying to do, is just try to not do any blocking, really. Yeah, because no, you, you don't want to be blocked. If yeah. you're blocking, you're losing. Exactly. <laughs> but if you're able to deal a bunch of damage, gain a bunch of life, then you don't have to block, and you can just fly over for the win. Yeah. Resolute reinforcements on the end step here. We got three soldiers ready to rock and roll, but there are two pretty large creatures in the way here in the form of the Blood Tithe Harvester and the Graveyard Trespasser. Yeah, and that's the thing I love the most about this Azorius Soldiers deck is basically Resolute Reinforcement makes it so you never really are playing transparently. Yeah. You know, you, it, if you just leave two mana open and you don't have these flash threats, you're like, okay, mm. you have Make Disappear, or you're at least representing some counterspell like that. But with this card, you can just 
end step, play yeah. some threats. Is it a counter or is it a critter or exactly. two in this case? Zephyr Sentinel being the other flash option for you and Chen. And that kind of feels like a counter spell, you know, it's just like, oh, I'm going to, you know, just get a body on the board, get a counter on my flyer and uh, protect my creature. So it's good times all around. Sky Strike Officer hits the board, starts doing its job. Drawing some cards here for Yuan Chen, and he's just going nuts. Look at this. Yeah, holy cow. That is a large battlefield. All right, we'll see what Nathan's Nathan story, has yeah. here. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things is Glistening Deluge. If you're able yeah. to find that and deal with a bunch of these creatures here, especially if Nathan has this now to deal with Sky Strike Officer yeah. and then the entire board, huge advantage to Nathan. Yeah, and you can see he's- And he's see, kind of he's, playing he's, exactly like it right yeah, now. Yeah, he's just pushing now. So Lithomantic Barrage, taking care of the Sky Strike Officer, and then getting in points of damage as well if we don't see any blocks here, but the attack trigger yep. exiling the creature from the graveyard. So you win could kind of have that on the radar here where you want to do a little bit of blocking so you don't get completely blown out. Yeah. But if Nathan had it, he probably would have just fired it off before combat, would have dealt a little bit less damage, but then for sure would have uh, dealt with the board. Yeah. So yeah, pretty Ooh. likely doesn't have it, but there's Shelly. <laughs> What's up, children? <laughs> All right, Yuan, you got any of those uh, sideboard options Eleven. to kill this critter? My color critter. I don't think a Praetor appreciates that. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, probably not. A very scary critter at that. Yeah. And now we'll see how many pieces of removal Yuan has in hand. Definitely brought in a good chunk of them. Yeah. Yeah, Lantern Flares, maybe there. Yep, the Brutal Cathars more than likely yeah. came in. Where do we go from here for UN Chin? There's four lands available. This deck plays very low to the ground. The curve is not high at all. So I Ganjo as land for turn, tap in three. And we're gonna see Takesha's Welcome. All right, so we're just getting some more card draw engine going. And just passing the turn, so end step again, like you mentioned. This could be representing another resolute reinforcements, I would imagine, or Zephyr Sentinel, perhaps. But now every time you draw, it's going to hurt. So yeah. this shieldred needs to be taken care of. That card is soon. so great mm -hmm. against other removal spells. Against spot removal, for sure. Another copy of Blood Tithe Harvester hits the board here for Nathan Stoyer. If you have just joined us, both of these players are at one game apiece so far. It is best three out of five, so they have to get three wins against their opponent to advance. We've already seen David Olsen do so up against Javier Dominguez. Yeah. So this is the second of the four matches. Yep, and David will play the winner of this, and mm -hmm. I am uh, pretty sure David would much rather play against Nathan. I think so, as too, As yeah. that Rakdos matchup against the Ramp deck looked pretty impressive for yeah. Ramp, but a hyper-aggressive deck like Yi Win that's able to pressure and have counter spells yep. for Ramp, that seems like a, a really rough matchup Oh, for it's David. like, oh, you'd like to you resolve a seven drop? You'd like to? No. Oh, no, no, Make disappear. absolutely not, <laughs> yeah. Make disappear, protect the negotiators, a lot yeah. of mm -hmm. disruption for that. Attack trigger again, jump it on the graveyard, another gain and drain for Nathan Stoyer, sitting at a very healthy 26. Ewan is at 10. This is yeah. looking good for Nathan. Absolutely. And we didn't even see any of the real sideboard cards besides Barrage, but Barrage is an excellent card oh, here. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh cool, you're playing black red? Well, I've got stuff that deals with that, but then, you know, on the other side of things, dealing with blue white too. The hate cards from uh, the recent sets. Pretty good indeed. Absolutely. Eight. Down to eight goes Yuan Chen.
Yeah, and every time the Welcome draws a card as well, that is going mm -hmm. to be affected by Shieldred. So while that card is really strong, you really do need to deal with Shieldred before you kind of um, <laughs> yeah, go start, crazy with that card. Start drawing cards. But, you know, that tells me then that UN Gen doesn't have a way to deal with the Apocalypse right now. Yeah, so it doesn't look like it. It's going to have to dig a little deeper here. Oh, okay. Hey. That's definitely playing with fire here, but with one extra card left, that looks like a uh, product of just having oh nothing boy. else to cast yeah. here. Yeah, no, Ewan's hand must be terrible yeah, right now. Absolutely. And that's the thing, that that card is phenomenal. Takashi's Welcome is great, but you do kind of still need that mixture of creatures and, you know, spells yeah. here. Otherwise, it looks pretty bad. Three mana do absolutely nothing. <laughs> Except dingy for two when you do play a creature. Exactly. So really high reward, but, you know, a really low floor on that card as well. You need to talk to these architects. Low floors, high floors, low ceilings. Yeah. <laughs> Just get it right, man. Yeah, looks like Nathan is not even looking He's to get jamming. Shieldred into combat at all here. Not looking to turn that sideways for the Wandering Emperor to deal with it. Just saying, if this card left untapped and get, doesn't get destroyed, evil mm -hmm. or Brutal Cathard, yeah. going to you know, win. Inevitability yeah. on Nathan Story's side of things. Just keep Shieldred hanging out. Unless she somehow becomes vigilant, she is not going to be getting into combat. At least not on the attacking side of things. So you in doing some math here now. I'm guessing maybe has a resolute reinforcements, but I don't think so. I, yeah, no. If he's moving to blocks, he's got nothing in hand of substance. Yep. Totally agree with you. Yeah, this looks like Nathan Stoyer going to be picking Six. up games two and three here and just having to win one more mm -hmm. uh, to advance. And you win. Going to be on the play oh. next game, though. So yep. uh, advantage back to you win. Down to four goes Yuan. If he plays any creature now, he just dies to Takeda's yeah. Welcome, unless it's a <laughs> you may. Yeah. That is really brutal. Has to start off. Two. Zero. Nope, just draw a card, so. <laughs> ding, ding, dead. Yuan Shen gets taken down there in rather impressive fashion from Nathan yeah. Stoyer, so let's go game number four. All right, game four. Looks like a mulligan at least. One mulligan from Yi Win there, down to six. Nathan Stoyer with a seven. But for Yi Win, the, uh, the mulligans don't hurt as much with a curve so low. Yeah, yep. With a curve so low, at least you do usually have um, a bunch Ooh. of things to do with your mana, but duress oh, here. It's effectively a oh. multi five. Yep, yep. <laughs> and I mean, that's risky for Nathan as well. Like when you mulligan, maybe Yi Win just kept a hand of two drop, three drop yeah. creature, and this duress could miss. But I post mean, board. It's information, so. Exactly. And you get to peek here, but taking the welcome out of the hand, there's a destroy evil for future shield rids. But yeah. now that Nathan knows about it, he just simply won't play it unless, you know, maybe you have another one or mm. waits till he has duress number two and then plays Shieldred. Yeah, clear the way for her that way. But uh, Valiant Veteran hits the board. Just a 2-2 by himself. So it's going to need some backup here very soon as the Blood Tithe Harvester hits the board for Nathan Stoyer. Turn passes back. Do we find any blue yet? We shall see. Here we go. Okay, that was oh, huge. cool, okay. That was huge. Now Harvester can't at least activate to trade, but can yeah. just block to trade. Okay, cool, yeah. You're quite happy to do that. You know, yeah. just don't let the Blood Tithe Harvester pick its target. Just get it out of combat or get it off yep. the board now. Yeah, it was interesting. There wasn't another option to just kind of hold on to it. Maybe you get another veteran, and then all of a sudden they're, they're four fours, fours yeah. and the harvester just gets, you know, looks a little embarrassing. And yeah, mm. now cut down is back online there. So yeah. that attack, um, you know, maybe, maybe a little would want to take back a little bit. Yeah, if you can get your critters, you know, if you can get your creatures to be, you know, more than the five between yeah. the power and toughness, that's always a good spot to be in up against these black base decks. Especially because there's not that many Lord effects at the moment in yeah, standard, you know? Not it's, it's really. mostly the white based decks that are playing it, you know, courtesy of um, wedding announcements, mm -hmm. these two drop soldiers. Yeah, and a lot of cards that kind of got forced out by, mm. uh, you know, cut down and reanimator strategies. Yeah. Definitely, wedding announcement was probably the biggest loser for this Pro Tour as far as not 
being as playable as it yeah. used to be. It used to be so dominant, so good against Grixis, so good against Rakdos, but Atali ended up uh, shutting down oh, that yeah. card quite a bit. Atali shut down quite a few things, as we're going to see the Zephyr Sentinel. Played here you. for Yuan Chen. Yeah, and uh, two cards left from Yi Win. There is Destroy Evil and one other mystery card here. So Yi Win does not have much going on here for this deciding game with his back up against the wall. Yeah, cut down again. Oh man, that's rough. Now, if Yi Win had played this a little slower, we'd be sitting with two three threes and a four two. Yeah. Yeah, with the with the Exactly, Lords. yeah. And those two cutdowns just would have really had no targets. And there's mm -hmm. duress number two to be able to get rid of that destroy evil. So if Nathan has shielded right now, yeah. now it's all ready to go. Yeah, I totally agree. Well, there's shielded oh. to the graveyard. That's a flex. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you have double shielded, maybe? <laughs> maybe. Yeah, that's wow. uh Oh, cool. Really yeah, let's just do that. Okay. We're just gonna start burning out here. Nathan Stoyer is uh Wow, he's just really trying to surprising shut the door here so fast. Really surprising to me to discard Shieldred, you know? I mean, even if you ha you just needed a land for Invoke to spare, if you don't draw it, just play Shieldred. Yeah. Invasion of Gobekan will give a look in the hand here. Lithomantic Barrage, Duress, a Fable, and a land in hand here for Nathan Stoyer. Ooh, we yeah, and Chen really back against the wall now. Really anything you take... Can still be cast. Yeah, it's just a two two man attack. On exactly. Side. And yeah, without any aggression to attack this, these are kind of the brutal draws mm. with this deck for Azorius soldiers. Like you, it's almost like a collected company deck where you yeah. have to keep an a good amount of creatures to make your other non creature spells good. But you also have to take some out to bring in powerful cards like Destroy Evil and Takashi's Welcome. All righty, so Fable the Mirror Breaker down on the board. Goblin oh, joins the Blood Tithe Harvester, and that's going to be enough for Nathan Stoyer to wow. pick up the victory against Azoria Soldiers in the hands of Yuan Chen. So, Team Handshake, one Got member one, through. Out, yep. one is through so far, so they're going to be looking to uh, improve those odds a little bit with the next quarterfinals, as we still have two more members of Team Handshake to go. So. What, what kind of a uh, impact does that have for the rest of the top eight, knowing that there is this team alongside them? Because it's four and four. I mean, it's great because one of the best things that you do in between rounds when you're playing at a pro tour, maybe before the top eight, is like, mm -hmm. okay, I played against this deck. This is how I sideboard. Do you think that's right? When you get to ask players that are either better than you or at your caliber yeah. and be like, no, actually, I would do this. Now, not only are you helping out your teams, but the whole team is getting better throughout the event. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they're doing the same thing over there in the corner. And now that Nathan's going to be playing against David, be like, okay, Javier, anything you did differently that maybe I should sideboard differently? So it's great to have a team there backing you up and uh, supporting you along the way. Well, let's hear from the man himself. Nathan Stoyer is with Cedric. I am here with Nathan Stoyer, our defending world champion and the destroyer of soldiers. Nathan, Rakdos Midrange, of course, you and your team, four of you in the top eight. I think you probably got the most favorable pairing of the four, though, yeah? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think soldiers is probably the only match of its standard where I'm like, I'm solidly favored. Everything else feels pretty close. You're all playing Fable Mares and such, but playing against this aggro deck feels pretty good. I felt like during the match, I really just needed to avoid stumbling. And one thing that I had a mentality of going into it is I want to be aggressive and put him on the back foot as much as I can. And so that just means trying to race and get him in a position where he has to start blocking. Because once they get to that position, it's not really recoverable for them. And uh, I stumbled a bit in the first game on the play, but in the other ones, my removal and then post-board with additional pieces of interaction uh, worked out really well. So, your team is crushing the tournament. You might start running into some of them. Are there any matchups besides the mirror that you, you know, are prepared for? Are you scared of playing against the white deck, the domain deck, any of that stuff? I haven't played a ton against the domain deck and uh, the white-black deck that Autumn is running. I'm not sure how much that changes versus Mono White. Um, I know they have breached the multiverse, which is scary, but it seems like our interaction is probably pretty solid in the matchup. Um, I wouldn't say I'm afraid of anything, and maybe it's more just like the unknown factor from this domain deck. Otherwise, the worst matchup is uh, 
probably Javier in the 70 card mare, 75 card mare, since uh, he's a tough opponent every time. Well, we're going to see how the rest of your tournament goes. Good luck. Two quarterfinals down, two to go. Plenty more here at Pro Tour March of the Machine.